Hey developers, today we're gonna to look at five tips for your LinkedIn web development profile. So we're gonna take a look at my LinkedIn profile. I'm gonna show you a couple of other profiles that I think are really good. And we're gonna talk about some tips that you guys should know to really nail down your LinkedIn profile because it is so important to have a good LinkedIn profile for you to be able to get recruiters to contact you, for employers to look through it, understand what you offer a company. There's just a lot of little things. So I'm gonna distill it down to five things I think are most important. Also, I love to hear if you guys have any tips for LinkedIn profiles, make sure you leave a comment below. I love to see them, I really appreciate it. And before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I'm really excited today to talk about our sponsor, Linode. And actually, make sure you listen all the way to the end. They have a really cool deal for Program with Eric subscribers. Basically, Linode allows you to host your own app, site, or project in the cloud. They provide virtual servers that make it super easy and affordable to get your projects online and shareable with the world. They have hosting starting at $5. It's really, really cheap. So whether you're an experienced developer or just starting out to tinker with code, you can use Linode. So if you're a viewer of Program with Eric, you can get $20 in free credit on new Linode accounts by signing up at linode.com slash program with Eric. That's up to four months free on the smaller plan. So get started by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks again. All right, hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I've been doing software development for over 10 years. I've done the front end, back end. I'm also a published author. I have a couple different books. So that's a little bit about me. If you guys like videos on JavaScript, web development, career advice, make sure you click that subscribe button and also make sure you click that little bell button and smash that like button. And also I'll just go ahead and I'll include my LinkedIn profile in the description below. If you guys want to become uh, a connector to me on LinkedIn, just click it. I'll, I'll add everyone. I'm, I'll just add everyone. If you want to be a, a connection to me, just click on that LinkedIn profile. All right, so I'm gonna kind of go over these five tips. I'm going to kind of take it one by one. I'm going to just riff off of it for a little bit. So first, obviously uh, this is not a tip, but this is beforehand. Make sure you go to linkedin.com and create a LinkedIn profile if you haven't already. That would be step zero. <laughs> but if you haven't, it's absolutely for free. And once you have one, you can really put it anywhere you want it. You can put it on your resumes. And But what's really nice is a lot of employers use LinkedIn, a lot of recruiters use LinkedIn to find candidates. And as a web developer, you are at a disadvantage if you don't have a LinkedIn profile. It's just fortunately in the last 10 years that it's become the norm. This is like how many, many recruiters, how many people find people is through LinkedIn. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you guys, this is my profile. And one thing I like to do is I like to go to settings and privacy and do a few things here. So this is my first tip is that to go into your settings and privacy and make a few changes. First, you want to take a look at edit your public profile. And here you're going to see right here in the top right hand corner, edit your custom URL. This is really important. I've seen a lot of LinkedIn profiles that never created their custom profile URL. And this is kind of a no brainer, especially if you're going to be including this address on your on different websites, on different uh, resumes, you're kind of, if you're sharing it with other people, you want to create a custom URL. And I think it's really good too for SEO purposes. So when people search your name, it comes up with this nice clean URL. Next thing I look at is the edit visibility. And this is still tip one, by the way. And uh, I kind of look at what, what my settings are. So I usually use basic name, number, connections, and regions. And then I put this public and this is all LinkedIn members on or off LinkedIn. Your contents could be visible in search results. So that's why if someone Googles your name, they can actually see your LinkedIn profile. But I usually don't allow everyone to see all the information on my LinkedIn profile unless they're my friend or they're signed up to the service. So they can only see like my background photo, the headline, summary, articles, activities, current, de current experience and details. But I leave off like my past experience, education courses, projects and groups, because I don't want everything public. I think there are people and websites that all they do is they look for public profiles and they just collect a bunch of information to build profiles for you online. They scrape information off of LinkedIn. Now, if you're logged into LinkedIn, you can get it, but LinkedIn actually has kind of anti-bot technology to help people to stop from scraping everybody's LinkedIn profile. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but at least this way, you have to at least be my friend and I believe even um, at least have an account to get more information about me. So that's for my first step is to make sure you have a custom URL 
and make sure you set these settings, I would say, to not divulge everything to people that are just randomly searching you on Google. That's the second thing I wanna say if I go back to LinkedIn here for a second, actually I'll click on this tab and I'll go back to my uh, view count settings of privacy. If you see here down here, there is how others see your LinkedIn activity. Choose whether you're visible in viewing or private mode. I did full profile if they're on LinkedIn, of course. But I also have this, these three are down here. So share jobs, changes, education changes, and work anniversaries from profile. I put this at no, and what this does is if you set this at no, every time you like update your profile and you may change your position or change the number of years, like you have a work anniversary, uh, or you like put some, I can even put uh, job changes, anything like that, it'll go onto your activity feed and then everybody that's basically friends with you will see the change. And I really think it's invasive almost, you know, it's kind of weird too. You'll get like congratulations every year that your work anniversary comes up. And then anytime you like you lose a job or something happens, like it'll be on the activity feed. So people are like, well, what happened? You changed jobs. And I really think that I rather control that information and post it myself on my activity feed if I want, rather than having LinkedIn do it. Do it. And it also spans people's LinkedIn activity feeds. Uh, it used to be really bad. It's not as bad as it used to be, but I would recommend to leave that as no. Also, notifying connections when you're in the news. This is kind of interesting. Some people can tag you like they do on Facebook. I just put no here because I don't want people to randomly tag me. And then mention others tags. Choose what other members can mention or tag you. I put yes here. Um, so they can tag me, but um, it's not gonna notify my connections when they tag me. So I think that's kind of a good compromise. Now the rest of the things here, I'm not gonna go into it, but you could definitely look even deeper into some of these settings and, and make some of the changes. I, th I think I leave most of this the default. Like I don't care about the ads and communications. You can also make it, change it so that way if you search someone else's profile, like they don't get notified or, but in that same sense, like they, you don't get notified when people search your profile. There's things like that as well. All right. So that's really, that was tip number one, if you can believe it. Now I'm gonna combine tip number two into two things here. And this is so important when you're creating your LinkedIn profile, you wanna make sure you have a nice professional image of you that's somewhat up to date. You can see here, this is actually a few years ago, so I should probably be updating this, but at least it looks like, you know, it's a nice profile picture. You can see here the lights. This is actually Christmas lights. Someone actually once told me, hey, you should probably update your your uh, LinkedIn profile as Christmas lights in the background. I, I know I'm not that big of a stickler on that. You know, I just left it in. Obviously I wanna put a nice new professional photo here soon. I'll probably be updating it, but you can see here, this is me you know, when I was a little younger and it, it looks good, I think. And then I also put this banner right here. Now, this is not the best banner, but I think it's okay. I put program with Eric, programming tutorials and your favorite frameworks. This kind of gives a flavor of I'm an educator. And this is one of the things I'm passionate about. I'll show you a few other profiles that have really good banners, but at least keep these two. You'll probably see if you look around LinkedIn that you'll see the ugly blue background, but this is such, it's, it's such prime real estate. It's like the first thing people see when they click on your profile and you want to have something meaningful there. So keep that in mind. I'll, I'll show you real quickly and we'll, we'll come back. I'm going to show you two profiles. Dylan Israel. Look, this is perfect. He has Dylan Israel, engineer, mentor, educator, and then a big JavaScript. So you know, like when a recruiter comes to your profile, you know, this guy is, into edu is, is an educator. He's a mentor. He's an engineer. He's into JavaScript. Here's him actually doing a live talk which is perfect, that shows you that he's a, you go back to the teacher. But if you were really into React, you might say like, you know, Joe Blow, React developer, engineer, blah, blah, blah. Now this is kind of redundant here. You can see he has engineer, mentor, educator, and then he actually has it in two places. So you could kind of mix this up, but this looks really professional and it really highlights what he does well. So let's go back to my profile um, for a second. And the, so that's number tip number two, make sure you have a professional photo. Also don't do black and white photos. I think some people think it's more professional for black and white. It looks more, you know, I've heard some people call it more, I don't know, morbid. So I, I, I like it a nice colorful, hopefully somewhat recent, doesn't have to be super recent video, uh, photo of you and then a good banner here. Also, this is the, the third 
tip is this is called your headline. So you can edit this and make it as whatever you want. So you can put like, I put senior software engineer at Serity educator, but I've, I could have definitely put like senior React developer, senior Angular developer, or, or Ninja slash blah, 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 educator. So you can definitely make that really yours and make it whatever you want. And to do that, you just gotta click this little pencil icon and you got, you can just change it to whatever you want uh, with this bar right here. And you can also put your current position and uh, you can kind of put some other things in here too. You can click here, you can show your education in your intro. So that's not a bad idea. Let me discard the changes. So now I have these two icons, it makes it really stand out. So I think these, these three things are some of the most important things on your profile, just when you're starting off with. Uh, so that's number, that would be number uh, three. So the last two are, are, are kind of similar. So first, the second thing um, you wanna do, or the, third, the, the fourth tip is that you really wanna fill out all your sections. So it used to have, I don't know if this is the same, but it used to give you like a percentage filled out and it gave you a, like a happy face once you had all this, the parts fill out. But you really want your intro, of course, about, I think definitely put an about section. You can put a featured section if you want. I don't have anything in my featured. And then your experience. I think those are some of the most important ones. So if you have your um, about page right here, this is really a way for recruiters to get to know you. So this is where I would put things like, what's your passion about? What's your vision? And also make sure that if you have the if people come to your profile and they don't click the more button. So if I refresh this, um, you see here, how do you do great developers? How do you develop great software that your customers will love? I've had many projects in my career where I've been tasked to create software with a goal in mind. In every case, it's come down to creativity and experience. That's a pretty powerful, like within two sentences, talks about what I, I love software development and why you should hire me. So make sure above this, see more that you have the most impactful statements. And then you can put everything else underneath it. Like as a developer, I create things no one else can create, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe I even put my Twitter profile in here. It's up to you if you wanna have that. So this is about sections really, really important. I would say also the experience section. Now I put all my, I put the books I wrote in my experience section and also the, um, my the course, my job that I have now, I haven't done a great job of actually filling all this parts out. I certainly could have done a, a better job at filling this out. Uh, one thing you can notice too, is that I had, this is basically the same company, but it got bought out. Uh, you can actually combine every single position you have at a company. So it kind of looks a little bit more fuller. Uh, see, I have my education in here too. And then I have my skills and endorsements. So um, this goes back to like what I'm good at, SQL, C Sharp. Obviously I have Vue.js and JavaScript and everything like that in there. And then I put some accomplishments, like some courses I took when I was in college, some projects that I create, my website, my podcast, uh, remind memo, which was a project I did a few years ago, property monster. And then it kind of has this interest at the bottom, but I would say, try to fill as much out of the possible, uh, uh, out of the profile as you can, because it's really important. And this kind of goes into number five, the last tip, and that's keywords. So if you really want to get recruiters to come to your profile and to contact you, you kind of have to do a little, I wouldn't call it keyword stuffing, but you have to add special keywords where you want it. So obviously if I was trying to get like a React job or something, I'd probably put senior software engineer at Serity, React, React Inficiato, or, or maybe Vue.js, Vue.js fan. And then in my about section, I'd probably put something about Vue.js in there. And then in my descriptions and my experience, I put Vue.js in there. And then inside my, uh, my skills, I would make sure at least Vue.js is in there and I'd try to get somebody to endorse me if I can. So you would wanna put it in at least those four places. You wanna put it everywhere you can. And if you put those keywords in multiple sections, it'll have a higher likelihood that when someone searches for, your, for those keywords, you'll come up. So that's the, the fifth tip is just to make sure you have the right amount of keywords in your profile and they're in the right places. So let me show you a couple of really other really good ones. Um, I have Kylie Rowe. I, okay, so I, 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 I did an MBA program at UNR and she was also part of that MBA program. But you can see right here, really great, great headline, Th three-time entrepreneur, keynote speaker, leadership and business development, 
and also you can look at the background like you say oh this is a really cool kind of background this is where she's from Nevada she's really interested in, in Nevada you could see she actually has um, some highlights that she put in here she has a, a really good about section remember before above the full before Seymour three-time entrepreneur Kino spirit group trainer and representative she has a bunch of featured so you can put like YouTube videos that you were in um, she did newscasts things like that she has her activity feed like I'm not a big fan of the activity feed but if you're like posting a lot of information you can add it in your activity feed here's the, the experience now look at this so this is her job Las Vegas Global Economic Alliance but she has Every time she changed position, she added a new position underneath this company. So that way it kind of shows you not that she just did vice president of economic development, but she also did these things as well when she changed position to the communications and public affairs. So it's really well detailed. It's all um, bullet pointed too. So that makes it really easy for people to read and find out what she did on the job. And you can actually even get endorsements. Um, people write letters of recommendation too. She had her stuff she did at UNR. And then she has all her education and then volunteer experience. This is perfect, especially for what she's doing with leadership. She has her volunteer experience. She has a bunch of skills and endorsements. So a lot of endorsements from a lot of people, event planning, public speaking, nonprofits. This is something I don't have, but you can put recommendations. So you can even ask people. There's a, you can, there's a button called ask for recommendations. So you can go into your LinkedIn profile and just ask people to recommend you. And these are perfect too to to have other people recommend you. She already has. She's and by the way, a lot of times it's kind of quid pro quo on the recommendations. If you give recommendations, people will give you recommendations back. So keep that in mind. And she has tons of accomplishments, like thirty under thirty, bunch of publications, honors, and awards. So this is a really good profile. And then I would show you uh, Dylan's again. We only saw the top. So here's Dylan's profile. I think this is a really good example of of uh, of a LinkedIn profile. Once again, really powerful headline, really great background, good picture, and then he has his featured like his YouTube videos that he puts are kind of just featured here at the top. Then he has he's big on the activities. He posts a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, so that shows up. Once again, he has almost bullet points of everything he's worked on. So if you're he gets tons and tons of recruiters contacting him all the time. Like he, his inbox is super full. He gets probably, I don't know, a few, more than a few a week. But he had, look at all these keywords. So if someone's looking for a JavaScript developer or software engineer, I mean, he has the, even JavaScript in his logo. You can see here, he's talking about, you know, spas, JavaScript, Angular, SAS, Jasmine, TypeScript, OOP, RESTful Services, SAS, Angular, Vue.js, TypeScript. I mean, he has all these keywords in, in each one of his profiles. So it's going to be really good if someone's looking for a front-end developer. They're going to see all these keywords. He even has really great education. So he doesn't he doesn't have a computer science degree, but he talks about how he almost got a computer science degree. He has a, like four paragraphs and everything he learned from Free Code Camp with more keywords of things like HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, regular expressions. And then he has all these certifications he has and volunteer experience. And once again, endorsements. He even got endorsed by Quincy Larson from Free Code Camp. So JavaScript, web development, AngularJS. So these are really powerful things that when recruiters start searching for keywords, he's going to be on the top of some of these lists because he has so many endorsements and so many skills. Um, he's in have he has like five rec uh, recommendations, which is really good. Tons of accomplishments, um, which is something I need to start doing. So this is another really good profile. Um, to help you out. So I hope that was a lot of information. I hope you guys will be able to get that, land that perfect job. If I've missed anything, leave a comment below. Tell me what else in your LinkedIn profile that you have that thinks that you think will help you out. Let me know. Later.